Welcome into the Edward Jones Chatting Cage. I'm Tim McMaster, and on opening day across Major League Baseball, the Chatting Cage heads to the desert in Arizona. Jeremy Brizel is in Arizona, heading things up. JB, take it away. Thank you, Tim. Uh, when you say Jeremy Brizel, it feels very formal. I'm not sure exactly <laughs> how to handle that, but I am JB alongside President and CEO of these Arizona Diamondbacks, Derek Hall. Derek, thanks for stepping into the cage. It's a gruesome place to be sometimes. <laughs> Thanks for having me in, JB. Fancy. Jeremy. Oh, no, it's, <laughs> now it's very formal. Uh, folks, you know how it is. This is very informal. You're the engine. You're the fuel that makes this engine go. Get your webcams fired up. Press that green button. Get in line. Get a question for Derek fired up. In the meantime, use the hashtag chatting cage. That's right. It's just that simple. Type it out, hashtag chatting cage. I will go to the internet, also known as the Twitter. I'll read those things. I make it formal by saying the before it. That's what makes it very specific. And we will go there now as you get the webcam fired up. All right. Sundogs Tech. Obviously, this is a big question for the Diamondbacks over the course of this year. And Derek, what have you seen from Zach Greinke this spring? Well, he's been terrific. I mean, the thing about Zach is he is such a perfectionist and he's such a student of the game. He also, you know, really mentors and impacts the rest of that rotation. He comes in, he leads by example, and I, I think what we've seen most from him is is that he can be such a mentor and, and teacher to the other uh, guys in the rotation, and they've all wanted to do exactly as he's done over the years, but this is somebody who is very meticulous about his work. Uh, he studies the game. He studies other hitters. He studies his own team's pitchers and his teammates, so uh, I've been very impressed thus far. And uh, seeing the damage that he, he's always done on the other side to us, it's going to be nice to have him in our uniform this time. <laughs> that is, he looks a little bit better in that Sedona red. Yes, he does. <laughs> there you have it, folks. This is the Edward Jones Chatting Cage. That's Derek Hall. I'm JB. Hashtag Chatting Cage. To get into this conversation even better, join us right here in the screen. Get in the show. Press that button. Get in line. And then get your webcam fired up for some FaceTime with Derek. Meanwhile, I'll go back to Twitter. And this is from uh, Walt underscore Joyo2. That's a great one. It's opening day here in Arizona. Derek Hall, what is your favorite opening day memory? Well, they're all so great. You know, I, I, I think back, and I think I've had maybe 23 or 24 opening days now, but they're all very special. Uh, when you walk into a park on opening day, the festivities and, of course, the celebratory decorations, the red, white, and blue bunting, the uh, first pitches and national anthems, you know, tonight is very special for us. We had a successful season with our NFL team, the Cardinals, and one of our fan favorites here, a local guy, Larry Fitzgerald, is going to throw out the first pitch, and our, our anthem will be sung by David Nail. But I can't pick out one uh, exact moment that has been more special than any other. Uh, I, I think well, I, I probably could in that Joe Garagiola Sr. we had out here throwing out the first pitch one day. Uh, and with this being a, a special time for us, we'll have a moment of silence for him tonight. Uh, as he lost his life, he passed away a few year, uh, a few weeks ago. And so for Joe to have been a part of one in the past, and I, I'll, I'll never forget being on the field with him, watching him throw uh, his first pitch to his son was very special. There you have it, folks. Just like that, get your questions in and find out the insights from Derek Hall here of those Arizona Diamondbacks. A gorgeous opening day here as we await the 2016 season. Fans, you're the most important part of the show. You're the fuel that makes the engine go. Join us in the show like this fan right here. What's your name? Where you're from? What is your question for Derek? All right, my name is Chuck from Phoenix. And my question for Derek, can I call you Derek or Mr. Hall? Which one is good for you? You call me Derek, Chuck. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right, Derek, my question to you is, <laughs> what are you most excited for this season for your Diamondbacks? You know, yeah, great question. I, I think I'm excited for uh, to see the additions that we've made to this team. You look at last year in the Diamondbacks, we finished the season very strong. We had a lot of momentum and a lot of things that went right. We, of course, were a, a, a top three team offensively all year, uh, top two when it came to defense, and it was obvious that the glaring hole, the big need for us, the void was in starting pitching. So for us to go out and get Zach Reinke and then make the trade for Shelby Miller, and now you move, who used to be our ace and is healthy after Tommy John surgery, Patrick Corbin, to the three spot in that rotation, it's it's exciting, and it's going to make the bullpen that much better and that much more rested. So I'm, I'm excited to see the entire work of art come together. Uh, but more so to see these new additions, like Gene Segura, who had such a great spring, uh, and then some of the young kids that are going to be up here for the first time, like Jake Barrett, um, like Brandon Drury. It's going to be nice to see them playing each and every day. So Socrates Brito, now with the opportunity he has in center field with, unfortunately, uh, A.J. Pollock starting out on the DL. But I'm, I'm excited for the season, really excited to see the newcomers. So thank you, Chuck. Uh, a great question there and a great answer. Anytime you start talking about your roster composition as a work of art, that is somebody who knows his baseball. This is Derek <laughs> Hall. I am JB. You've heard a lot from here in Arizona. Let's go back to New York. Tim, what do you got back there? 
Thanks a lot, JB. And we're going to Facebook and Samantha in Scottsdale. It kind of piggybacks off that last question. She wants to know, how does your depth at each position compare to the depth you had a year ago? Well, great question, and I've seen now more depth than I thought we actually had. When you look at how well we performed in spring, and, and you don't, you're don't, you not in it just to win spring training, but for us to have gone 24-8, and eight, uh, and you look at the way we had so much depth that was established and identified really at every position, we had tough decisions to make uh, throughout spring training at catcher alone. You know, between Castillo and, and of course, we had Herman come in and Tuffy go switch, and we had to send Tuffy down. That was very tough. You look at the depth with our bullpen. We had two spots for four pitchers, and with Burgos and Barrett and Bracho, uh, very tough decisions to make, um, as well as our outfield. You know, unfortunately, Pollock went down, but because of that depth, because we had Weeks and we had Owings who can play the outfield and Socrates Burrito along with Peralta and, and along with uh, Yasmani Tomas, we've got incredible depth in the infield. Guys that can play short or can play second with Owings and with Ahmed and with Drury who can play second or third and Lamb um, with Goss, uh, Gosselin. Phil Gosselin can play any of the positions. Really excited right now about, about all the depth that we have. Uh, there you have it, folks. A great answer again from Derek Hall as we continue this Edward Jones chatting cage from here, Chase Field in Arizona where the Diamondbacks are getting set for their opening day. It's just the energy is palpable. It's an exciting part of any season. And, of course, uh, unlike some of the East Coast cities, you guys will probably play this game today. We're going to play. <laughs> yeah, even if it, the weather was bad outside, we would shut our roof. <laughs> See, it works out pretty well when you have roofs like that. Yeah. And to, to that, uh, let me go back to Twitter now. Uh, AZ underscore Goodyear02 wants to know, Derek, what's your favorite part of Chase Field? Well, Chase Field is, you know, we mentioned one of them. I mean, I think this ballpark uh, is as nice as any other. When when you look at this place with the roof open like we're going to have tonight and the door panels open, it is absolutely gorgeous. And, of course, in the summer we have to keep it closed, um, you know, and, and keep this place air conditioned when it's 110 to 115 outside. But the one thing that's always been very unique here is our swimming pool. Uh, and it's a suite for 35 people. It sells out before the season even begins. I think that's what makes this place uh, incredibly unique. But I love the fact that we have so many different destinations throughout this ballpark. Whether you want a singles-type crowd out at our Coors Lake Strike Zone or you wanna, you've want you got kids and you want to spend time with them up in uh, uh, upstairs where we can have kids who actually play on mini chase field repli <laughs> replica fields. And we've got people in uniform throwing to them with wiffle balls. And we've got batting cages. So whatever the destination may be that uh, that, that, that fits your craving we've got it here uh, it is no doubt about that chase field one of the exciting places to go whatever fandom you may have yeah. it's tr totally true from youngest fans all the way up to some of the older ones who can then enjoy the pool that's how it is <laughs> this is the edward jones chatting cage fans you're very important to the show get your webcam fired up join us like this fan right here what's your name where are you from and what is your question for Derek? how's it going my name is vaughn from scottsdale how's it going Derek? Um, hey vaughn it's going great how about you <laughs> I'm I'm doing good. Uh, my question for you is, what's your favorite new Diamondbacks uniform? Mm. Mm. Uh, great question. I happen to like the teal mixed in with, with the Sedona red. So I like both the home version, which you will see tomorrow night, which is our white with the Sedona red, the black, the teal. But I also like that road uniform. I like the boldness of the dark gray. We're the first to really go with that dark gray color. And with the red and the teal, it's our number one seller right now. And you wouldn't think that the road jersey would be number one, uh, you know, with Arizona on it, but it is. Our D-backs uniforms are flying off the shelf, but the one that we have the most difficulty keeping in stock is our gray road, road jersey with the teal in it as well and i happen to like that best too all right there you have it folks everything you could possibly want to know we're finding out right here in the edward jones chatting cage and if you've been listening and i'm sure you have uh, i want to lead us in now to the edj question of the day as you can see Derek hall knows how to speak and speak well on a microphone he has a <laughs> broadcasting and communications background so to that end Derek, yes present company excluded who is your all-time favorite baseball announcer well, I'm biased, and I, I worked for the Dodgers for a number of years and, and got to work alongside one of the greatest, and that's Vince Scully. And uh, he, to me, is, is the best that will ever have lived. Um, to be able to be one man in a booth and be able to tell stories and talk to you as if you were the only one there uh, with him one-on-one, -on -one, he's fabulous. And I don't think there will ever be an announcer as great as, as Vince Scully. He's my favorite of all time, but I, you know, I also – I love the crew we have here, and you know, in particular, our, our radio announcer, Greg Schulte, who's been here since day one. I keep telling him he's going to be in the Hall of Fame one day, and I really believe that, and he belongs there. But, uh, yeah, I have to say Vince Scully. He's the greatest ever and uh, Hall of Famer and legend when it comes to, to that, uh, that skill and that trait.
Uh, it's certainly Vin Scully is uh, an answer for the ages to most questions about broadcasting, I think. You, you have to say Vin. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you haven't worked with him, like, I was fortunate enough, too. And, and he was the one employee that I had who I used to say could fire me if he wanted to. Um, <laughs> but growing up, listening to Vin, you know, and I, I would go home and just tell my wife, you know, pinch me. I can't believe I worked with Vin Scully. He's uh, the greatest. He, it's, he's a remarkable person as yeah. well, which is something oh, absolutely. That gets, uh, overwhelmingly overshadowed I, in the career. And I'd go play golf with him, and he'd stand over a little putt, and he'd miss like a three-foot putt, and he'd go, oh, dirty name. And I'd say, <laughs> say it, Vin. No, no, dirty name. I mean, just class act even on the golf course when I'm throwing clubs and cussing and screaming. <laughs> so basically, Vin Scully actually d- announces his own round of yeah, golf basically. with you. Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In a very clean style. That's right. It's a family <laughs> He's <friendly>. a gentleman. <laughs> Unbelievable. All right, folks. There you have it. This is the Edward Jones Chatting Cage. We continue our conversation with Derek Hall about all things uh, baseball related, whether it's front office, on the field, the operations here at the ballpark. Uh, let's find out where your questions are. You're the fans that we want to know. Uh, what's your name? Where you're from? What's your question for Derek? Hi, I'm Andrew, and I'm from New York. I have a question. How do you come up with the uniforms, and how do you come up with the foods from the ballpark? I'll tell you what, Andrew, those are both great questions, and we'll take them in reverse order. The last one that you asked was about the food. We really lean on our chefs, and our chefs are extremely creative. We look for what we call a wow, W-O-W, a wow item each and every year. So a couple years ago, (laughs) it was our D-Bat dog that we have here, and it's an 18-inch corn dog that is fried and filled with jalapenos, cheddar, and bacon on a big old bed of fries. Um, Last year, we came out with the churro dog, and the churro dog is like a hot dog, but it's all dessert. So instead of the bun, it's actually a donut. Instead of the hot dog, it's a churro, and your toppings are now like yogurt ice cream and whipped cream and caramel is really good, big seller. This year, it's the cheeseburger dog. And so the cheeseburger hot dog is an actual cheeseburger, bacon cheeseburger, ground up in the shape of a hot dog, frozen overnight. The next day, it is dipped in flour, the same flour and breading that you would see with chicken tenders. It's deep fried, and then it's topped with more bacon and and, and tomatoes and ketchup and less. Anyway, it's going to be a big seller as well, but we're always looking for the big wow item. As far as the uniforms, we did something very unique when we created and designed our uniforms. We actually included all of our players. So for about a year and a half, it was very quiet, private. We would bring in our players, we'd bring in some of the coaches, and we all designed it together. And we worked with some of the other vendors like New Era and Majestic, who actually make the uniforms. They were extremely excited about it, and we came up with probably 30 different versions. You know, what some of the players liked, some of the others didn't. At the end of the day, we came up with these, you know, eight to ten uh, varietals, and uh, we're, we're extremely excited about it, more so because we designed it all in-house with our creative team, but also with the players and coaches. There you have it, folks. I, I, I'm a little distracted by the choice of food, <laughs> food? over the next six hours, <laughs> but I'm also more distracted by the fact that we're sitting there alongside a man who can talk as passionately about the roster composition and Socrates <laughs> Brito as he can about a churro dog. <laughs> That's what you get at the Ever Judge yeah. Channing Cage. Uh, uh, while I figure out which of those desserts and hot dogs I'm going to enjoy, Tim, could you fire up a question? I'm going to start <laughs> looking for where those are in the ballpark. Yeah, JB, getting hungry back here as well. Feel free to bring some of that back to New York with you. That'd be fine with me. Um, We're going to go back to Facebook here, Derek. And Jacob in Goodyear wants to know, which D-backs promotion for this season are you looking forward to the most? Ah, good question. There's some really good ones, and uh, especially with somebody who lives in Goodyear. I know you spend a lot of time here at Chase Field, so I appreciate that. We're going to have, of course, bobbleheads are very popular this year, and we've got uh, four in particular that are uh, in the likeness of our players. Goldie is one of them. A.J. Pollock is our first one. Uh, But what I've seen that I really like, too, because we have the new uniforms this year, on Memorial Day on that weekend, we're actually going to have an apron. That we, uh, that we give away. So those of you that like to grill or even those of you that just like to cook in the kitchen, a nice D-backs apron. I think that's unique, and I, I'm looking forward to that, along with a huge beach towel uh, giveaway as well. All right, we uh, continue the conversation here at the Edward Jones Chatting Cage. That's Derek Hall. I'm JB. Before we say goodbye, and the park continues its uh, preparation for opening day, I want to go back to Twitter. Robert Stevenson wants to know, Derek, as you mentioned him just a moment ago, a lot of experts have Paul Goldschmidt winning that NL MVP. What makes him so very special? Well, I think what makes him most special is he doesn't know how good he is. He's the most humble person I've ever met. He's the hardest worker. He comes out here. He's the first one at the ballpark. He's the last one to leave. He's constantly trying to improve and get better. Uh, But he's just a really good teammate. I I think his hard work, his ethics, his passion for the game, he's somebody that that all kids can look up to as a role model because, uh, you know, I know his wife. I know his child firsthand, his parents. He just comes from a really good family. He cares. He's articulate. He goes to 
hospitals and visits with kids. He goes to schools and reads to kids, not with a camera, but because it's the right thing to do. He's the real deal, and I'm very, very proud of him. All right. Well, folks, on that one, that's going to be our last answer for today's Edward Jones Chatting Cage. I want to thank you for taking time to be with us and get your questions fired up. I really want to thank Derek. It's a huge day here uh, at the ballpark. You have a lot going on. You're very busy. Uh, I now have to track down some concessions. We'll show you, JB. Thanks. Uh, this is Derek <laughs> Hall, one of the great, great uh, people in all of baseball. I want to thank you for being with us. Thank I want to you. thank you, fans. We'll see you on the next round of the Edward Jones Chatting Cage.